Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. On today's episode, I'm gonna walk you through Anthony and Ruani's amazing four by two and a half foot mixed reef. Um, so I started off a while ago where I just fell in love with clownfish and anemones yes. and just seeing that symbiosis between the two of them and that's what sort of got me into the hobby um, probably what 16 years ago something like that yeah, so right. I've been in and out of yes. the hobby um, and um, ended up just focusing on getting a small tank with clownfish and anemones okay. um, and then after that moved on to a bigger tank then moved on to a bigger and then fell in love with the corals and then I played yeah, with nice. the fish types and so and yeah and in the end yeah this <laughs> is what I've got at the moment. So what dimensions so, is this tank? Uh, it's a four foot by two and a half. Yes. Um, and I went a little bit shorter so I could get my hand in. Sure. But it didn't really work out that way. I still can't get my hand in there. <laughs> Fair enough. I was going to say, what do you mean it didn't work yeah. out? It's great. But, <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. For, the, for the first. And you've got this incredible stand with like a bar all the way around. Yeah, so um, this is spotted gum. Yes. Uh, my husband, Anthony, and uh, his dad, Tony, actually built it. Yeah, So right. we ended up getting the tank and just the bare stand yes. made. And then after that, we sort of thought we'd clad it ourselves. And so Anthony decided on putting this uh, bar here and then this bench space here so that, you know, if I'm doing testing and things like that can be That's used there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and with the stand part, yes. we've just got some acrylic yes. um, and some magnets. And so it's really easy to take, you know, in and out. Yeah, right. So you're, you're claiming here is just acrylic with magnets attached because you've got... Um, Oh, you've got magnets in, in here. So yeah. It just sort of on. yeah, just sort of slips in. Yeah, and nice. Three parts oh, you've there. Got a and channel then, down there yeah. So sit in and then magnets hold it up. Yeah. Yeah, great. And I'll just pan the camera back up again. You guys also have been pretty handy with the um, with the canopy for your lights. Yeah. You've know, made this fixture yourselves with. Um, you've got what do you got, two T fives in there? Yeah, two T fives. Three Hydra twenty sixes. Yeah, we have. We've initially started with just the hydras yes um but we found with the sps that we were getting a lot of um shading yeah and yeah. so the underside was dying off and then we weren't getting much success sure with the growth of the sps and so we decided to put some t5s in there and so yeah we ended up getting just a second hand uh bare body okay. and then we built just the um wooden frame around it yes and then jason devries has done all this yeah, yeah. acrylic stuff for us just this to trim it off nicely local acrylic champion yeah and he's also made this nice little like, crown to go around the tank yeah, yeah just yeah. to make it a bit nicer yeah it really ties it in well otherwise you get you sort of see the bracing yeah and, stuff. and you see all the algae otherwise <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah fair enough now, how long has this tank been running for? Uh, I'd say now it's probably about six years. Yeah, yeah. wow, well, it's five months for five. six years. Yeah, yeah, really nice. So tell us about some of your fish and corals in there that. Um, um so what it is. yeah, so when we had the uh, a smaller tank, yes, um, and you were involved in that one when I had the aqua reef, wasn't it? Yeah, the aqua yeah, reef down sure. in the other room. Yes, and uh, moved it to this room here. Mm -hmm. uh, I did have the purple tank that I've got in here. Sure. Um, as well as the two clowns yes. um, the and the chromus. <laughs> yeah, and the fish love to hide in the Yeah, they do. <laughs> um, and the chromus, that's about all I had in there. Okay. Um, I had the anemone in there as well. Yes. Um, and bits and pieces, but all the others have been, been new really yeah. that we've put in there. And, and I mean, there's a few striking pieces in here that's starting off with this chalice island here which is a, a beautiful pink chalice with yellow eyes that just you seem to grow it quicker than i can grow my hair oh <laughs> <laughs> i remember once you brought a frag to me and i was expecting a piece of a 20 cent coin and you brought in like a, a bread and butter plate so yeah, it's like, I that's not a frag that's yeah huge. It, i can't keep up with it because it just keeps growing so I try to trim off bits, but the more I trim off, yes. the quicker it grows. Yes. So I've sort of stopped fragging it a little bit, and I think it stopped growing. Okay. You know, I, I think I was just trying to catch up to get to a certain yeah, size right. when I was fragging it. So I haven't been fragging it as often. Yeah. Yeah. Part. Yeah. Good and you've got some other. There's two other nice, beautiful chalices along there. Plus, you've got this lovely gold one down yeah, here. Yeah, that one there, I like. So the chalices are going well. Then you've got these two. You've got a hammer um, section there and a torch section. Two beautiful, both. 
both would be classified as gold torches, one a gold stem and one a gold tip. Yeah. Um, looks so happy and healthy there, just flowing away really well. Yeah, I think I needed that sort of movement in the tank. Sure. Um, we used to have mostly LPS dominated before. Okay. And with this tank, we've sort of gone with the SPS. So yes. Um, we just needed that movement down yeah. the bottom it's and I sort of like wanted to get the flow reaction. Yeah, and I wanted to get the contrast with some of the colors. Yes. So um, my aim was to collect some more, but they do seem to expand and get bigger and bigger. You know, yeah, I was that's... hoping to put some more in there, but it's, yeah. It's a good problem to have when you've got your coral doing too well that it, yeah, it grows sort of, and gets happy. Yeah, they've doubled in size. And, and this one here is, I think it expands a bit more <laughs> yeah, that, 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 um, as is, the day goes on. It's crazily large. You've also got a couple of beautiful Sith gollies um, hiding in the back there. I really love that red with the red, uh, sorry, the green with the red stripes. Yeah, I think they call it a bleeding apple. I'm yes. not sure, I'm not very good with the yeah, terminology, yeah. but that's, um, yeah, it's one of my piece. first gollies that I bought, um, of course, from Dave from yes. Deer Park. So, yeah. And most of the pieces here are from Deer Park as well, so. Definitely gets a good yeah. range of And some of them are from frags from you. So. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's good to see that they're, they're going well. Now, you told me a little bit of a story before about your uh, Ballas Angel. Oh, yes. Pair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the female, when I first got the pair, I got them two years back. Okay. I think two years back. Um, for one of my birthday presents around this time in May okay. um, and they were doing really well and then the female was starting to pick on a lot of my LPS so mm -hmm. things like the ACANs um, and when I talked to um, Dave from Deer Park he sort of suggested maybe I could swap sure. the female out if he, she's been a problem and he won't even realise if I swap sure. quickly <laughs> so um, I, I was sort of a bit shocked at that and I thought maybe you know they, what if he doesn't accept yeah, the yeah. female? But um, we ended up setting the fish trap, caught the female, yes. and then um, we had it just in the trap, and then went to Deer Park, bought the other fish, popped it in, um, and took the other fish out, and I, I don't think he's even realised that it's a different female. <laughs> so, and For this all the one... out there, I'd like to think he does realise. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's just happy with the new version for yeah. himself. <laughs> well, th this female has not touched any of it's just a model citizen because she has not touched anything at all so yeah. they've been really good but he does chase her around a fair bit yes and that was happening with the other female yeah, as well it's more so on the, more on the yeah <laughs> I, she does hide a little bit as well sure but i think sure. that's i'm not sure if it's normal but i think that's the so um, way they yeah i think that's how the pairs go so yeah, not allowed it? to be in the spotlight <laughs> <laughs> beautiful fish the stream is on that one this is yeah um, it's um funny. Starting to grow out. How about this um, Potter's Angel here, which I've got some beautiful pictures I'll put on screen of. Um, I, I, I love my nice fat pygmy um, yeah. angels, yeah. as, as you know, and that's a uh, that's a stunning example. Just yeah. the, the colorings and markings are um, sensational. So yeah, I'll definitely share some pictures on screen of, um, of that one so we can see how, how beautiful it looks. Yeah. Can you tell me about uh, the infrastructure, the logistics side of it, of what makes this tank tick, what, what work you do on it, what sort of upkeep it is? Um, so I probably clean the glass once a week sure. um, as, a, as a norm. I try not to put my hands in often. Okay. Yeah. Um, I try to keep that to a minimum. Yes. Every now and then I'll see an Aptasia, you know, sure. I'll get, you know, some Aptasia X on it, that yes. sort of thing, or um, something that I need to maintain, but most of the time I'll keep it going as it is. Sure. Um, and we've just got some dosing and a calcium reactor. Yes. Um, it's just pretty pretty basic, I think. Um, and we've got the leader meter kicking in. I've got an IBC in the garage that's sort of connected. Sure. And we fill that up with natural salt water. Yep. Um, what and, sort of water changer are you using with the... Um, I forget. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. I forget. We're going to have a quick look on the yeah. screen down here. We're going to 10 litres a day. Oh, yep. So, so that right for a tank yeah, of size, ten liters a day, natural salt water. Got a calcium reactor there running through um, the second chamber as well. So you're dosing some of the apple forest. Range. Yes, we are. Yeah. Um, just as I know, you were transitioning from dosing onto the calcium reactor, and probably just got to. Yeah, we had the bio pellet reactor going ah, before, right. yeah, yep. and so we took that out because we were yes. having a bit of problems with it clogging up. Yeah. Yep. Um, and some of that slime that yes. you build up with the bio pellets for and. Sure. Um, so <laughs> yeah, I think it's doing really well and much more stable having yeah, yeah, the yeah. calcium reactor going. So yeah. Sure. And you run a uh, is it a reef octopus? Reef octopus, skimmer? yeah, yep, skimmer, yep. and it yeah, seems nice. to be doing well. Nice size skimmer yeah. for the tank. 
You've got a uh, Fuge lit by a um, AI Prime. Yep. Yep. Very nice. Just... Overdone there. <laughs> for a sun, but <laughs> it's okay. doing well. That's the job. That's the job well. Excellent. And yeah, what, what sort of target parameters are you chasing with a tank like this? Um, a good, good variety of mixed corals in there. Yeah, so I think I've got a salinity of about 1.06 is what it sort of seems to be stable at. Sure. I was trying to keep it a bit higher, but I think it's natural that it always goes down to equivalent uh, equilibrium of about 1.026. Yes. So I try and keep it that way. Okay. Um, the uh, calcium, we've sort of had ups and downs at the moment. Okay. Um, I think because the corals are sort of growing and taking up some of the calcium. Yes. We've got it about 380 at the moment, so I'm okay. trying to raise it a little bit. Sure. Um, the nitrates have always been a little high. Okay. I don't know. I've always kept. I, I don't seem to. Yeah, yeah. I don't seem to have much problems with it, but no. it's always around the 10 oh, plus nice. per million, so... Some people think that that's high, that to me that's yeah. not high, particularly in a mixed reef. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, you wouldn't want yeah, to be going, never, never wouldn't want to be going below 2, and you yeah. wouldn't want to be going over 30 or 40, but I yeah. know some tanks do incredibly well even above 30 or 40, but yeah. just somewhere in that range of mixed reef, that's good. Yeah, and the uh, KH is about um, 8.8, 8. 8, something sure. like that, is what seems to be normal depending yeah, on yeah. when you test obviously yeah, in yeah, the day yes but um yeah but um i try and keep it pretty simple i try not to dose too many things um just um i want to be able to test it if i'm going to dose something okay um and so i try and keep it as simple as i can yeah definitely mm -hmm. now this tank is beautiful as, as it is there's a bit of a sad story Come yeah. on, a sad story, maybe not a sad story. I've had a couple of tears already. <laughs> it's, yeah. Yeah, it, it's ultimately a great story, but um, uh, I've come out today to help take some pictures and to, to basically document this tank because um, in the short to slash medium term future, you're going to be shutting this tank down. Yeah. Uh, which is, it's, just, it's a shame to see, but um, it comes with the promise of uh, new yeah. potential with yeah. a, a new tank and a new house. Um, can you tell us about what sort of change, what tank you're going to in the new house? Yeah, so we're uh, thinking of shutting this one down, and we'll probably go to a five foot by two and a half, mm -hmm. I think, um, just as a peninsula, so sure. it's the three sides. Yes. Um, in our new place, um, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah hoping to keep um, the equipment. Yes. Um, as the basics, mm -hmm. and we won't sort of sell that. Yeah. We'll probably just sell the livestock and the tank. Sure. Yeah. Um, and, and that way it'll make it easier. Because you're going, to be, you're going to do like an interim move before you get into your new house. Yeah. So we've got to stay at um, yeah um, father-in-law's place sure. for a little bit, and I don't want to have the hassle oh, or the burden for them. You well, know, to have that. Well, a tank of this size is a big yeah. operation. You wouldn't yep. want to move it twice. Yeah. Um, plus, it gives you an opportunity to. Um, if it, I mean, the tank's cooling wonderfully, but if you wanted to go with a slightly different approach, you yep. before you're going to be using some uh, artificial rock. Yeah, that's um, what we're thinking. Um, we've got real live rock in there. Yes. Um, and so we're hoping that if we go um, some of the artificial rock and we cycle it out, we might not have as many pests in sure, there. Sure, And so that might be a bonus. Gives you good flexibility with scaping as well. Yeah, you can, you can do it out of the tank. Do it and, out of the tank. Yep, and, and not worry. Weeks yep. to do it rather than try to keep live rock wet and yeah, try to do it in tank. Yeah, and I think this time around I might not have as much rock as I yeah, have. Sure. Um, to move the peninsula. Yeah. Because you, you want to be able to have sides. it. Yeah, yeah. and I've found that line. too, that I have run out of space for coral, so I want to try and maximise <laughs> the space for coral. Sure, so, sure. So I can um, put some more in there. I really look forward to seeing that tank because this one's an absolute stunner and it's um, been a pleasure to um, interview you and document it so that you'll have these memories of this tank and yeah. use it for inspiration when you're planning your new tank. So, I really uh, appreciate it, Sam. Oh, it's yeah. my pleasure. Thank you. I think it'll be nice for me to look back at it because, yeah, I'm sort of tearing up already. Oh. About it. <laughs> like I said, it, it's only a sad story in the short term. It'll be happy in the long run because yeah. your new tank, I know, but as evident by the standards of both the, the hardware around the tank but also the livestock in the tank, you guys don't do things five seconds. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really keen to see um, the new build. So thanks for your right. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's pretty much the uh, end of our uh, review of Anthony and Ruwami's Amazing Mixed Reef. Um, I had to uh, cut the interview fairly short there at the end because um, my good friend Ruwami started getting a little bit emotional about um, the thought of losing um, her fish and coral. Um, that means so much to her and it's uh, really touching to see. So um, 
it's not going to be the end of those animals' lives. We, we need to find a new home for them. So if uh, you or someone else uh, would be interested in uh, purchasing uh, any of those fish or corals, uh, please get in touch. Um, where Rwani is located in Geelong, but um, yeah, anywhere sort of, I guess, in the uh, Geelong, Melbourne, Victoria region. Um, if you're looking for some really healthy and um, beautiful specimens, get in touch. And um, yeah, nothing much more really to say other than uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time on Parker's Reef. Bye.